Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Take 5 with Ryan and Sonu. Sonu, we're going to call this one Stocks in a Correction. Now before we go further, this is obviously a video on YouTube. I see someone over your shoulder. Who is that? Uh, my kids call him Skelly. They're not very original with names, but uh, he is wearing bullhorns. The one's falling off, Ryan. Do you want to tell people why? Well, if you're a bull, it's been a rough go of things the last couple of months. I can see where where you wouldn't have both horns higher. It is Halloween week, so that's why we have um, – what's his name again? Scully? Is that what you call him? Or Skelly? Skelly. Yeah. Skelly. That's why Skelly is the third wheel today. But let's, let's just get into it, Sonu. One of the big things, obviously, a lot of people have heard. Stocks are in a correction. Now, what is a correction? By definition, and believe me, the media, whoever makes these definitions, it is what it is. That's down 10%, right? The S&P 500 has officially been down more than 10% from the July 31st closing high. We're up over 20% for the year. Now we've had a 10% pullback. Just some context around this, Sonu. I went back to 1980. The average year sees a 14.3% peak to trough correction. So it's normal, okay? 22 out of 44 years since 1980 have had at least a 10% peak to trough correction at some point during the year. Looking at those 12 times, the market finished higher on the year with a 10% pullback, at least 10% pullback at some point. Those 12 times, though, the market was actually still up 17% on average with a 10% pullback. So a lot of numbers there, I'm aware. I think it's just really important to put some context around this. With a strong economy, like you're going to talk about very soon, you can have markets to pull back. And after a really strong start to the year, we think this is more of that. Let's be very clear. Coming into October, we thought stocks would do a little bit better. The terrible war that's happened in the Middle East kind of was a curveball. A lot of people didn't see. That's put a lid on things, um, obviously. But at the same time, Soto, we still have positives. Let's talk, let's talk about – let me do one more thing, then I'll go to you. Yep. November. The good news here, November is the best month of the year on average since 1950, up 1.7%. No month has a better return. When you're down in October, though, like we're going to be this year, but the next month is November. But if you're up on the year, so down in October with stocks, but up on the year like we have this year, November's been higher the last seven times with some, that goes back to late 80s, with some really strong performance. So those are just some context things, some things to think about. So at the end of the day, from a macro point of view, if the economy's strong, we think, again, you still probably want to be looking at adding equities and, and, and having stocks here going forward. Talk to me about just how strong the economy is. Yeah, and just to connect to the, that to the stock market, I mean, Economy equals sales equals profits and then, you know, the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. So the stock market tries to gauge all that. Look, the economy is strong. We just had, we just got uh, third quarter GDP growth numbers. This is after adjusting for inflation. The economy rose 4.9%, Ryan. That was well above anyone expected, right? The big boost was obviously businesses were restocking inventories. By the way, that counts because businesses are thinking, you know what, future demand is good. Mm -hmm. So we are going to restock our shelves and back right. offices, all of that, right? Exports was the only drag, but barely, it was more or less flat. But then exports and inventories try, tend to be the most volatile parts of GDP. You take that out, right? Don't count it. Real demand, right? Demand from everybody else in the economy, households, businesses, and even government, right? That was about three and a half percent. That gives you an idea of the underlying speed of the economy. And even if you take out government, which I don't think you should, government counts too, mm -hmm. real demand, private sector demand is up about 3.3 percent, right? And that's gotten a lot faster. People are spending on restaurant and bars, recreational goods, vehicles, furnishings, apparel, household appliances, all sorts of things, right? It's because income growth is strong, right? And here's some perspective for you, Ryan. Real GDP, right? The economy... Mm -hmm. after adjusting for inflation, is now higher than what the Congressional Budget Office, who do projections year after year after year, it's much higher than they expected just before the pandemic, right? Oh, the right. CBO expected the economy to be this size only by the end of 2023. We are there already with a quarter to go. And by the way, that's come um, after three massive shocks. You had COVID, worldwide pandemic, millions of people died, workers got laid off, all of that, right? Then you had an energy shock, which sent inflation to the highest level in 40 years, about 9% inflation in June of last year. And then as a response to that, you had another shock, the Fed, right? The Fed came in, they tightened the most aggressive pace in 40 years, right? And we still haven't had a recession. And I don't think we are going to have a recession anytime soon. No, I'll jump in. We've almost hit the end of this week's take five. But again, the bottom line, 
Sonu just talked about the economy is on really firm footing. Earnings are still strong. The consumer is still strong. It's not perfect. We're aware your manufacturing is getting better. Housing is not great. But overall, the, con- the economy continues to surprise the upside. And we've got a really rough go of things for equity investors the last three months. But when you put context around it, it's maybe not as abnormal as we thought. And we still are optimistic. Stocks, stocks can make a pretty major low fairly soon and have a good end of year rally. So with all that, this is Carson's latest Take 5. Stocks in a correction. We'll see everyone next time. Thank you.